everybody. Welcome to Thursday night. And tonight we're going to talk about stabilizers. And every about once a year or every other year, it's good to have a good review on what the stabilizers do and the different kinds that they make and, and just, just a general re review. Um, so let's get started here. We stabilize for two reasons. First of all, to get through the stitching process without a lot of puckering and a lot of problems. Second, and then we the second reason we, we uh, use stabilizer is a fabric is inherently unstable, whether it's a knit or it's a woven. Woven is going to stretch on the bias, so therefore it's unstable. Knit is unstable in all directions. So, so we want it, so we need a stabilizer with the fabrics. And that's just to get through the stitching process. And we also stabilize in order to keep that item that you've just spent all this time and thread and money and whatnot embroidering so that it stays nice throughout the life of that item, whether it be a garment, a tote bag, a wall hanging, whatever. So, you know, those are the two reasons. Um, so reason number one, to get through the stitching process. So it, it, it's important what type of stabilizer you pick, the weight of the stabilizer that you pick, and you know different different things. And then basically, stabilizers fall into three categories: cut away, tear away, wash away, and then you have your toppings, which are other things. Okay. Um, now, when you're using a tear away, let's first talk about our cutaways. If it's something to be laundered, whether it be a dress, a blouse, baby items, whatever, with the exception of towels, they're, they're a slight exception, you want to have a cutaway. Why? Because after you, you know, one, if you have a tearaway, and tearaway is easier to remove, that's why it's used in the commercial well, world easily, because when you're done, you just turn your item over and rip the stabilizer out and you're done. With a cutaway, you're going to have to trim around the embroidery that you just stitched. So in the in the commercial world, you'll see a lot of tearaway being used. If you've ever bought, say, a t-shirt or blouse that is uh, already embroidered, it looks nice when you first buy it. Go ahead and wash it. It starts to look all ripply and the lines are no longer straight. And that's what happens when you use the tearaway. And once you launder it, there's nothing there to to counteract the forces of the thread and it's going to pull in and push out so if, if you have a zigzag your stitches are going to pull this way and they're going to push the fabric out that way that's called what they call push pull and then you compensate for it remember you'll hear something later called pull compensation that's what that means so when you have a cutaway it's used for garments and that way it's going to stay in the shape and looking nice through as long as you have that garment. And I always recommend that you pre-wash garments or at least pre-shrink them, even if that means hitting them with some hot, hot steam in order to shrink it as much as you can, uh, that you can do that. You don't necessarily have to wash them. Um, it depends. Now, if like with towels, I will wash towels, uh, but it depends on the brand. And if they want, if, if they're cheap towels and you're making them for like a yard sale, I mean, a, a craft fair or something like that, I probably wouldn't wash them because you're never going to see those people again, you know. So if they wash it improperly or wash it in hot water and hot dryer and everything crinkles well, you know, if you tell them don't do that, you know, and they do it anyway, oh, well. Uh, I've had family members where I have not pre-washed their towels. And then they are ripply and they they will call me and complain about it. <laughs> so those I'll wash. But I'll usually buy a better quality towel so that it doesn't shrink so bad. So the Walmart ones tend to shrink a lot. <laughs> so I also wash it in cold water and, and maybe a delicate dryer so that it doesn't fuzz up real bad. Okay. Um, tearaways are good for wall hangings, tote bags. Quilts, and yes, I, yeah, you wash quilts, but you're usually going to quilt the quilt, you know, with the stitching through all three layers, that's going to stabilize the end product. So you don't have to use a cutaway there. Um, and like anything, jacket backs, you want to use a cutaway. 
um, and there's the, the different weights. Um, like I said, rule number one, you want to pick the right stabilizer, whether it be cut away or tear away. Wash away is if you want everything to completely dissolve away, and that's going to be something like lace. Lace work, where you want it to be nothing but thread left, then you would use a dissolve away. And for some other reasons, we'll use, use a dissolve away. You want to pick the right weight of a stabilizer. And there's usually four different weights. And why? It's to, to prevent puckering. You're going to get puckering because you've used the wrong stabilizer. You've used too little of a stabilizer, you know, too lightweight of a stabilizer. You're going to get puckering if you have your tensions too tight or if the design is wrong or you've hooped too tight or you've hooped too loose or the phase of the moon, I swear. Sometimes you don't know why you get puckering, but you can get puckering for a lot of different reasons. It helps to have the right weight of stabilizer. And that is dependent on how large your design is and how many stitches it has. It's stitch dependent. Let's start with tear away. Tear away, well, there's lightweight, medium weight, heavy weight, and extra heavy weight. And that is, each, each manufacturer is going to put their spin on what they think a medium weight is for. And they don't really tell you what medium weight means. They don't say, oh, this is for towels, or this is for knits, or this is for whatever. They don't tell you that. Also, there's not a whole lot of industry standards. So you can have the same stabilizer by two different branders one will call it a lightweight and one will call it a medium weight and it's the exact same thing because really there's only two manufacturers of this stuff in the whole world and i think sulky owns one factory and i forgot who owns the other one but there's only two of them so therefore there's like <clears throat> 20 different brands of stabilizer guess what they're all the same thing they're either a sulky or that other manufacturer they're all the same thing but the brander puts their own spin on it. Now, what is stable is the weight of it. They have to tell you how weight, how much it weighs per, I think, per square meter. So a lightweight is considered something that's 1.5 ounces or less per meter. That is used, you think, that's used for about any design that's up to eight inches, I mean, 8,000 stitches. The average four by four embroidery, like a full, with a fill stitch and everything has about 12 to 14,000 stitches. So you think, I don't ever need to buy lightweight, wrong. But lightweight, especially if it's a cutaway, is good enough to keep the integrity of the design through the washing process. It may not work for stitching, but it will work for, for just laundering it. Okay, now tear away. Tear away is essentially made out of like cellulose or paper in other words it's paper it's a paper type product and as the needle punctures it it makes a little hole and after you get so many hole punctures there's nothing left there's nothing holding your fabric nice and taut so therefore i would suggest that no matter what weight it says on the package it could be as thick as a cardboard box but it will still only support 8000 stitches after that, you either need to add another layer of stabilizer or, or couple it together with a cutaway. So like I said, a lot of times the cutaway, the tearaway is only 8,000 stitches and there's different kinds and we'll come back to, to the different types. We're gonna talk first about the, the uh, cutaway one. Okay, this is a no-show mesh. It's really lightweight and it's really, it's kind of sheer. This will support, this is a lightweight, it's, it can be used for a design up to 8,000 stitches, okay? So I would, I only, on, always only hoop one piece of stabilizer. I almost never hoop more than one. Because say I've got a 12,000 stitch design, I could put two layers of this, but you don't need to. You don't need to hoop it. It's hard to hoop more than one layer together because it wants to ripple and shift and do all kinds of stuff. Now this no-show mesh can come in different colors. It can come in white. I have it also in black. 
and I have it in, and this is the beige. It can come with an adhesive or not have an adhesive. And we'll talk about that in a minute too, why you would want an adhesive. And, but if, say I'm hooping, I'm not gonna hoop fabric. I'm just gonna hoop this. So I would hoop this. Usually when I have a label, I'm, I just roll I'm it stitching inside a design out and put it on the inside of the stitches. rolls. Then I can tell what it is because a lot of times you I can't usually show a tear away from a cutaway. Hey, this is 8,000. That gets me through 8,000 stitches. So here, here's a regular tear away. And see, it literally will tear. Okay, cutaway won't tear. So therefore, that's good for a garment. This one is not good for a garment. But if I'm going to be doing 12,000 stitches, usually I keep the scraps of this stuff. So I watch the counter on my machine, or if I detect any puckering going on at all, then what I do is I simply break the thread and I, I just float this underneath. Okay, so I have 8,000 here, 8,000 here. So now I can support a design up to 16,000 stitches with no problem. When I'm done stitching, I just tear this away. And then this gets cut away around the outside of the um, of the design. What I like about this one is this makes no ring around the design. So a lot of times you will see, a, say, a white shirt or a light shirt. And if you use a cutaway, and this one's a cutaway, see, it won't tear. Therefore, this is going to show through, shadow through on a white. Say this, say this is my blouse. Yeah. And even a plain cotton, a light color, it's still going to show through. You'll see the shadow through here. You know, like say if this was cut around, this will not show the shadowing through. Cut away can also be dyed any color you like. So you can dye this with fabric, fabric markers or fabric paint or, or dye it ahead of time, whatever you like. Here's my design on the top. And I'll just use this dark, okay? If I were, where that piece of cutaway I had, here it is. Here's the piece of cutaway. And I'm gonna cut it just a little bigger. Okay. See if this were behind, this is just a white t-shirt and see how you can see that ring around here, right here. And that that shadows shadows through, but if you were using a this instead, I'll just leave it square. See how you don't even see it. Okay, I can't even see it under there. See, it doesn't shadow through, which is why I like to use this with, with light blouses, light fabrics. Okay, that's the cutaway. And we'll talk about the different forms it comes in because it comes in adhesive, non-adhesive, water-soluble, adhesive, and like what? <laughs> it can get confusing. Okay, now that's the lightweight. And also, if this were, if your design were even bigger, say it was 20,000, you can keep adding layers and layers and layers of the tearaway until you, until you reach the 20,000 stitches, which would be like three three layers of this. You can add as many layers as you like because you're going to tear away all these tearaways, but you're going to keep the one layer of a cutaway. So you can stack them. Then you have the medium weight and a medium weight, and this is a medium weight, is two ounces. In other words, it weighs two ounces per square, square meter. And this is used for any design up to 15,000 stitches. And like I said, if you had a 14,000 and you were doing a blouse, I'd think, oh, I only need one layer. Well, this is going to shadow through where the lightweight won't. Um, again, I, you can sometimes use this and then keep adding tearaway. Then you have the heavyweight. And this is good for up to 30,000 stitches. And that's used for most medium-sized 5x7 designs. Okay, then you have 
extra heavyweight, and that's three ounces or more. And this stabilizer can be used any design up to 50,000 stitches. These are good for jacket backs. Now, some jacket backs, say if this was the head, it's heavyweight, it's, it's really, really thick stuff, and it is harder to hoop. So usually a lot of times with a jacket back, I will put a spray and put two layers of this together with that jacket and back jacket back. Because sometimes jacket backs can have like 120,000 stitches and take you half the day to stitch it out. Yeah, so then I will probably put two layers of a cutaway with a giant uh, jacket back. But you don't have to. You could keep layering that lightweight up more and more and more and stacking it up until you get no puckering. So like I said, first sign of puckering that you can see on your hoop when you're, you're stitching, stop, blow it in a, low, a layer of tearaway. Now, uh, the one exception to the tearaway is towels. And there's one which is a hybrid. It's called rinse away tearaway. And their rinse away tearaway is made with the same glues that a tearaway uses. In other words, it's going to dissolve as pretty much as much as you can get. And it also has rayon fibers in it. So therefore the fibers stay and are trapped inside of the design and will not wash away. The glues do, the fibers do not. So therefore I will use it on a towel because I don't wanna see that white ring of a cutaway or whatever color of a cutaway looking at the back of the towel. I think that's ugly. This tears away mostly from the towel and then the rest will just will sort of blend in with, with the file. So this is how I buy it. And this is like almost getting down because this is one of those I buy in the 100 yard rolls. <laughs> I have a lot of this. There's different kinds of tearaways. Like I said, this one is the rinse away tearaway. Then you have the tearaway, regular tearaway. Then you have, I can't remember the name of it right now. There's the easy tear tearaway, and then there's the regular uh, tearaway and the tear, rinse away tearaway. What the rinse away tearaway does, so here's the water. I put it on here, wet it wait a couple seconds and it just starts to dissolve and you see these little fibers. You can especially see it against the black. Okay, you see the little fibers. Those little fibers are what is gonna stay in the stitching. What the, 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 easy, the good tear away that I like is clear, tears like paper. See how cleanly it tears and it doesn't leave any pieces behind, no, no fuzzies at all. This one isn't as strong as the tearaway, but there is a tearaway that's similar to this. It will leave fuzzies behind, just not as many of them. And there's a tear a tearaway firm and a tear just the regular tearaway. I always, if I'm going to buy just tearaway, I like the tearaway firm because it does cleanly tear away. That's if you're making badges or things that you're going to just tear from the outside that's got a satin stitch on the edge and you want to cleanly tear it away by the tearaway firm. Tearaway firm is loses its stability really quickly because it is very, very brittle. It almost has the consistency of paper. The cutaway is going to come in different forms. It can come regular. It can come with a fusible, which is heat fusible. There's a water acted rated fusible. And why you would want to use that. Now this one has no adhesive to it. There's a knit, and I'm going to just hoop it. And it's well hooped. It's, it's fairly drum tight, and I didn't press it ahead of time. But here's why this isn't going to work well. So you, you would take, here's a pin, which is like a needle. So as I push, look what's happening. My fabric is moving around. And see, it's lifting. There's nothing there. So you would want to use either a heat fusible. This one's a water soluble. No, this is a heat fusible, it's, it's shiny. So I, what I would do when I'm doing a shirt is that you would, you have the fusible. So if this were the fusible one, you would put it on the back of the shirt in its relaxed position and you would press it on. 
okay? Or if you have the water soluble, you would just put a little bit of water on it and press it and just, just put it on here nicely. This is a piece that I've, I've used, a piece of the water soluble uh, adhesive. And see now this is able, I, I like to use that for things that I'm going to be hooping a lot in different places because I can hoop it here. And then when I'm done stitching, I hoop it here. And that way I don't have to keep adding stabilizer to it. Also, you can glue them together. See how I just put them together and I'll put more glue here because that it's this is getting old and it doesn't adhere very well in, anymore, but just re regular glue. Or if you don't have any of that, then I recommend using an adhesive spray. So what you would do is I'm, I'm using the KK2000, but you could use 505 spray or any quilt basting spray. And say this was the place I wanted to use the, I want to put the embroidery. So I would just spray my stabilizer. And put it down and make sure it's nice and straight. There we go. Nice and straight. And here it is on the front. Well, straight, not iron, but it is straight. Okay, so now this is not going to stretch. It's going to stay. And then I would go ahead and just hoop it. But look, the needle does not push it around. It is no longer being shoved around by the forces of the threads. And of course, I let it sit for a minute, let it dry. The KK2000 I like to use because it's air dissipatable and the adhesive will go away in about two hours. So you just simply let when you're done. Let it sit there for a little bit, go do something else, come back, and that way nothing will, it will no longer stick. <clears throat> the KK and the 505 spray, you would have to wash it to get it out of there. If you're using the heat, heat soluble one, you can hit it with a light heat again and then pull it away and then cut most of it away. The water soluble, you just sort of wet the top or wet the back and it releases very easily. I should have pressed that down nicer. But what this does is it keeps it stable in all directions and, you, and it will give you a much better stitch out. Then you have the stick and tear, tear away or cut away. All of these come cut away and all that comes in this sticky back stabilizer. This is my least favorite stabilizer. Why? Because it, it, especially as it gets older, it gets tacky and it gums up your needles. But this is an excellent way to use stabilizer if you can't hoop something, like a big thick towel that you can't hoop. You would hoop this with the shiny side up or the paper side up. Release it, it's a little too thick. Now, the, the package on here will say it's like three more ounces, but they're also counting the release paper when they, which doesn't count as far as the weight of the stabilizer. It's just the weight of the whole product. Okay. Then you would take a pin and it helps to have a nice thick pin. And then you just cut out the area, just score it with a pin. And then do that on a flat surface. If not, you'll pull, you'll cut all the way through if this is a tear away. My friend Millie, this is the only way that she hoops anything. She hates to hoop. Okay. And then this is tacky. And you would put your knit on top of it, t-shirt or whatever. And now it's stuck and it is no longer moving with a needle. This can be used. Now, when you're done, which is why a lot of people like this one, um, wash away stabilizer. 
Dissolve away stabilizer is wonderful for making lace work. And here is, here is some lace work. And this is where you are just hooping your stabilizer and you've put the same thread in the bobbin as in the needle. And therefore now you've got a piece of lace. Now this design is one of John Deere's and this is supposed to go down the pant leg of a pair of jeans. Well, you know what my friend <clears throat> made out of it. <laughs> okay, so now here's a dissolve away stabilizer right here. And it looks a lot like the no-show mesh. And what it does is it completely dissolves with water. So if you, okay, well, usually I'll rinse it under water and it's going to get sticky and gummy. Usually it takes a little more than just, oh yeah, it's gooey and nasty now. <laughs> yeah, but you would, there you go. See, it's starting to dissolve. See, there's a hole. Guess what happens if you drop water on the whole roll? It goes all the way through. So you have to patch this stuff. And yes, you can patch your stabilizers together because stabilizer can get expensive. So here's one where I've just simply, I've used part of it and then I had some left over. I just took a rotary cutter. I put two ends together and then I just ran a stitch. Now this is a cutaway. If it's a wash away, use wash away thread and that way you don't have to worry about it because that's what I do with this stuff is that I will patch these little holes with the leftovers and that way I can use this again and see this hole's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Look how, look how big that hole is now. So, so this is for lace work. Anytime you do lace work, but it's also like if you're doing a mug rug or something and you, you know how a mug rug on the outside of it, like this one, okay? This is a mug rug. What I did was I, I hooped just my dissolve away stabilizer. I made the mug rug as if it were with regular directions. And then at the very end, I just took a wet Q-tip along the edge and see now you can't see you can't see the edging at all. You don't see this. You see no stabilizer. Now, this one hasn't been fully immersed. Now, this is a mug rug that if I turn out and give this to someone and they put a cold glass on it without washing this first, it's going to shrivel up like that. But, you know, once you wash the whole thing, everything dissolves away. I like this stuff. I use this a lot, too. And again, this is the most expensive of all the stabilizers with this dissolve away mesh. If you're making a Christmas ornament and you want it to be stiff, because this is nothing but, but starch that's spun and laid out to dry so that it has the stability of, say, that no-show mesh. If you want to do use this as a Christmas ornament, you want that ornament to be stiff, you, what you want to do is, is rinse this in cold water just until the stabilizer disappears, until you get it melts away that you don't see it anymore, then put it out to dry and then press it flat. But if you want it to be, because then it'd be like bulletproof. If you want it to be soft like this, then you're gonna wash it in hot water, hot as you can get it with a little bit of, of either shampoo or dish soap or Dawn or something like that, a mild detergent, and then let it soak, rinse it out thoroughly, repeat it, as many times as you need to. I think we rinse this one like three times so that it's really soft. This is really important if you're going to make, be making lace collars because the stiff way is going to itch and scratch you. So you want this to be nice and soft like regular rayon lace. And this is using rayon thread. And it really is nice and soft. So like I said, cold water to make it stiff because the starch will stay in the fibers of the thread and hot water with some dish soap to make it soft and supple like it's regular soft lace. Okay, in the old days, before we had that dissolve away mesh, in order to make, uh, this is my bag of my washaways. <laughs> I have a lot of our, our toppers. We had to use ultra solvy, which was like oil cloth. It was really thick. It's really thick. And if your thread jammed and it cut, you couldn't patch it. That was it. You were done. You have to start all over again. This was not 
not practical at all. There's ultra solvy and super solvy. And I think this one is the ultra solvy, which is, this one is super. And this is, we, I call all water soluble stabilizers solvies because they were the original manufacturer. And here's a different one. This is like heavy, heavy plastic. It's even thicker. Uh, now for toppings. Now, like I said, there's solvy. Here's the solvy. You want to keep it in a Ziploc bag or something that's because it gets really brittle. And this is starting to get brittle and see how easily it'll tear if it's brittle. But it, it'll, once it gets brittle, it can't be brought back to softness anymore. And I've, I've had this stuff forever. And because you don't use that much of it, because this will be as a topper. And what a topper is, is if you're, if you're stitching anything that has a nap, corduroy, velvet, t-shirts, sweatshirts, fleece, anything that's got a little bit, little bit of texture to it, what happens is like, say this is a sweater and you have knit and purl, knit and purl, knit and purl. If your thread hits on top of the yarn, then you can see it readily, easily, or the top of a co the uh, cording on a uh, corduroy. If the needle falls here, it digs in, and then now your line is jagged. And so you got high, low, high, low, high, low. And then the edges of your embroidery are all jagged and they don't look nice. So what you do is you put a topping on it so that this sits on the top and forces the threads, whether it falls in the middle or on the end or on the top in the same spot so that you get more even edges and everything looks a lot nicer. So this one is using the Salvi or the, they have different names. They have Hydromeld, Wet and Gone. There's different names. But I call them all Salvi. This one is Hydromelt from Baby Lock, but I call them all Salvi. <laughs> and again, this needs to be kept in a Ziploc bag. Now, say we were done stitching and we end up with this hole. Okay. And you have a whole bunch of them. Don't throw it away. Keep them. Put them in a Ziploc bag, store them for a while. And let's just say that you have all these little bits. Take a piece of bond paper or copy paper. Put one on top of the other. Fill in the holes. Then take a steam, light steam iron. Put it between two pieces of paper white, just white bond paper, and then press them together with a little bit of steam. They will stick together and make a whole new piece. Um, I think I have bought, made in, in 25 or 23 years of embroidering, I think I've bought three, three rolls of this stuff. And then you have other cut types of toppings. You have, this is a press away topping. This is a dry cover up topping. It'll come in clear and in colors. This is a press away topping made by OESD. It's the same thing, only thing it doesn't have the little nubbies that these have. What these do, these are a topping. They do the same thing that the Salvi does. The difference is, is on towels. If you have a flat fill stitch that's going back and forth, what happens is that when you wash the towel, the nap of the towel will work its way through the stitching and it'll look like lint on the front of your embroidery. So you need not only a topping, but you need a barrier of some sort. And I think if you watch the, the thing we had on towels, I'll put it in the comments below the link to it. And a barrier needs to be something that will not wash away. The ultra solvy, the super solvy, those will all wash away with water. These do not this stays you can tear most of it away so when you're done with the embroidery you tear most of it away and to remove anything else you have to hit it directly with a hot iron so this really can't be used on fleece because fleece is usually made out of nylon and nylon is going to melt at a low temperature so it has to be something that is on a fairly high temperature that this will melt and here's one where i have melted it well, here's the black. 
so that you can see. See right here? This is, you can even see the shape of the iron. See, I hit it with direct heat of an iron and it completely dissolves away. And then you take a paper towel and just roll your iron on it and the little plastic beads just fall off. But this isn't going to work with a real open design uh, because you can't get the iron close enough. Here's a design it would not work with right here. See this, you'd have to touch right in between here. It would still show shiny. You'd still see this shiny stuff through it because you can't get your iron that close, even with those little tiny clover irons. But like over here, you could. It would just dissolve away from that if this were a towel. It's not, but you know, you, it's got to have direct touch with a hot iron in order to dissolve. Now, there's another reason you would want to use a barrier. Sometimes need a color barrier as well. Like say if you were. We can't really see anything here, but say you're doing a snowman or even this frog. Say this frog were white. See the eyes? Okay. What it did first is it would do the black first and then it do a running stitch from one eye to the other. And then you'd stitch white on top of it. And then white on top of it is going is sort of an opaque kind of color. And therefore, you're going to see the line going from one end to the other underneath of it. Then you would need not only a regular barrier. I use it's called dry cover up, and it comes in different colors. That I don't have too many colors left, but uh, and also comes in clear. And this I usually put underneath snowman and stuff for Christmas, just to hide the color underneath. Another barrier that you can use if um, you're doing a towel and this isn't going to work. You can use the Solvi in conjunction with putting um, bridal tooling underneath of it. Bridal tool tooling will also act as a barrier underneath of the stitching to help protect it from the nap coming up. Most of this stuff, if you took my guide classes, I have all this information in the handout that I use for that class. If you haven't taken it or, or taken that class before or you just want another copy of the, uh, the Embroidery 101 handout, just email me and I'll, I'll be happy to send you a copy of it. And it's got all the basic information about, about the stabilizers. And I think that's all that I have about stabilizers. And let's see, does anyone have any questions? I don't see any. That's all I have for you guys tonight. I'll go ahead and, and stop recording and I'll say goodbye to the folks on Facebook. And I will see you next week. You guys have a great week, and I will be talking to you next week. All right. All right. Enjoy. Thank you again. Take care, everybody. We'll see you. Bye bye. bye, -bye.